Streets. It's Joanne here. I'm currently vlogging my travels today and I mentioned in that vlog that I was going to do a separate video discussing cow dairy. And there's been a lot of questions in the comment section of my videos on why I'm not eating cow dairy or why my clinical nutritionist has asked me not to have cow dairy, et cetera, et cetera. So I figured instead of doing a huge long explanation in my comment section, that I would take this opportunity to just do a separate video and kind of just point out some of the basics Uh, I'm not gonna go into detail about all this stuff, guys, because listen, I'm gonna say first and foremost, I am not a doctor, I am not a clinical nutritionist, I am not a dietitian, I am just a middle-aged woman <laughs> that is learning about how different foods affect my body, affect my physiology, my biology, and I'm learning a lot from doing my own research, from experimenting with different things that I have eaten myself, and also under the advice of my clinical nutritionist. I highly recommend before you guys make any changes or any drastic changes or anything to your diet that you do your own research. Look things up on Google. Ask your own doctor. Look for a nutritionist in your area. And I will say, that I have also learned that not every state has clinical nutritionists because they are only uh, they they are only given permission to practice in certain states. In certain states, it's like illegal for them to practice dispensing supplements and stuff like that, and giving advice and giving diagnoses and stuff like that. So. I don't know what state you're in. You'll have to look that information up yourself, but there is a difference between a dietitian and a clinical nutritionist. Uh, you wanna look for a nutritionist, and it could be your doctor. In some states, it is a doc, just a general practitioner that will do this for you. But you wanna look for a health practitioner that will review your past medical history, your blood work, uh, your, your food habits, your symptoms that you're having and actually do and actually work with you through an, what's called an elimination diet to determine where you have the most reactions for when it comes to food, okay? So with that said, if you're ever in doubt as to whether you have a food allergy, the best thing to do is to do what's called an elimination diet, which is you just eliminate it. Like seriously, stop eating it for two or three weeks. <laughs> just stop eating it for two or three weeks. Totally cut it out. No ands, ifs, or buts. No, maybe can I get away with this, blah, 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 blah. No, okay? Look at all your labels, make sure you're not eating anything that had that can make it when something says may contain milk, no, don't eat it, okay? So that's what I've had to do to be able to determine that I know I have a physical reaction to dairy. I don't know, I'm not I don't have an official allergy. I just know that it's, I have an intolerance to it. My, my body reacts to it. I get, um, I have a lot of symptoms. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But when I don't have the dairy, I feel 180, 360% better, whatever you want to call it. I feel amazing when I don't have dairy. So to answer people's questions, is it hard not to have dairy? No, it's not hard at all because I feel so much better without it. There's the Dollar Tree. I think I'm going to swing into the Dollar Tree now so I can try to hit these all on the way. So I'm gonna continue this as I'm going to the Dollar Tree. So why, why not cow dairy? Okay, so we're gonna start with the basics. The basics are cow dairy, whether it's milk, whether it's cheeses, uh, any type of byproducts that come from milk, right? 
they come from cows and the milk that cows produce is meant for calves it's not meant for humans okay cow milk is meant for calves and did you know that calves gain two pounds a day first month over 60 pounds that's because that milk contains a lot of growth hormones a lot of natural growth hormones okay we shouldn't have that we shouldn't be having that kind of those kind of hormones in our body so number one the number one issue is the fact that it's not meant for us we were meant to have our own mother's milk for only a short period of time and then we get cut off from that it's not because that's what we can naturally be able to digest now I will say this what I have learned I have learned that if your lineage if your ancestors have in the past had a uh, maybe they were ones that ran dairy farms like centuries ago right if they ran centuries ago years ago whatever if your ancestors have been around the dairy industry and have consumed cow's milk for an immediate extended periods of time over 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 generations that ability to, to be able to process that milk can be passed down to future generations so you may be a lucky one that actually has the physiology to be able to um, to be able to <laughs> so you may be one of the lucky ones that actually has the ability to digest cow's milk but the majority of humans are not meant to digest cow's milk or cow's dairy in general so what are the symptoms that you may have to if you're wondering well do I have an issue with cow dairy the first is you could have do you have like asthma symptoms do you have headaches do you have migraines do you have fatigue do you have like runny nose? Do you have sinus issues? Are you, do you have like a puffy face? Are you blowing your nose all the time? Are you coughing? Are you clearing your throat, <clears throat> gagging all the time? Those type of symptoms are really specifically geared at the fact that you ha may have a, a intolerance to eating cow dairy. And again, the way you can to, the way you can test this is just eliminate cow dairy from your diet for two or three weeks and see if those symptoms disappear. And then if they do disappear, then you probably have an intolerance to cow dairy and you probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't have it. Okay. The other thing is what you look at, what you got to look at guys is that we tend to overindulge on things, right? So it's not just if you have one dairy a day, it's the fact that we have cheese, we have cheese in our eggs for breakfast. We have cheese on our sandwich for lunch. We have pizza for dinner, right? We have cheese and crackers for a snack. It's like cheese, cheese, cheese. And we have cottage cheese or we have sour cream. And it's like they're, they're milk for, you know, we have too many servings of cow dairy a day. So even if you took it upon yourself to try to hone down and eliminate the amount of dairy that you have, that you take in a day really could help eliminate cut down those symptoms drastically. The other thing is that with uh, drinking a lot of cow dairy is that you have greater chances of developing osteoporosis and bone breakage, which is something that, you know, we've always grown up thinking milk does the body good and calcium and it builds bones and stuff. Because of the animal protein that is inside of cow dairy itself and the amount of cow dairy that us humans consume is that we get what's called this calcium leaking out of our bones and it goes into our bloodstream and actually cause it causes a negative effect on our bones it's like we have almost too much calcium in our body and we and it causes actually brittle bones and breakage so the really the really different there definitely is a correlation between them. You can have your daily dosage of calcium can be taken care of just by having foods that are rich in calcium outside of dairy like kale, spinach, broccoli, almonds, flaxseed, those kind of, you know, you can look it up on the internet. There is a ton of plant-based products that can definitely give us uh, plenty of calcium than having it come from cow dairy. The other big, big thing is that when it comes to, when it comes to the dairy industry, now I'm not gonna get into the whole PETA, how the cow dairy industry treats the cows. And I, you guys can do all that stuff yourself. I am not vegan. I realize that the industry is there. I realize that, you know, some people 
believe in eating animal products as far as sustaining life. Some people don't. I do not want to get into that. I don't want to get into that argument. I'm just telling you from, from my point of view how, how this particular food, these particular food products affect my body is the reason why I want to, I wanted to do these kind of videos and explain what I understand for you people. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into the whole thing with how bad the, 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 how bad some of the cow dairy industry treats the, the animals. Cause I know there's some probably amazing dairy farmers, organic dairy farmers, but let's just say this, even an organic dairy farm has to do has to do one thing and that is they have to make sure that the cow thinks it's pregnant all the time which is pumping them with additional hormones whether they're natural or synthetic they have to pump them with uh, a natural hormone to be able to to confirm to make them think that they're pregnant so that they will be lactating and, and producing milk so that alone having that addition those additional hormones should not be uh, they, they can counter they can counteract our own hormones that we have in our body. Okay, non-organic milk is even worse because they're even pumping in synthetic hormone. There's a there's one in particular that's the recumbent bovine growth hormone. When that is in our system, that can really wreak havoc on our own on the way our hormones are actually working for our body. Do you have history of cancer in your family? Then you might want to really take a look at historically those people who have had cancer in your family, how much cow dairy they have had, I would consider eliminating cow dairy from your diet because there is definitely a correlation. There was a study, and I believe it was like 2006, you can look it up, uh, from Harvard that took 100,000 100,000 women from the ages of 26 to 46 and did a whole long study with them and the study came out that the, the, that the girls, the women who had the most intake of cow dairy also had the greatest risk and the greatest number of cases of breast cancer and, and other cancers of the body. And same goes for men. There, has, there is 20 plus studies that correlate cow dairy with prostate cancer in men and also it doubles the chances of Parkinson's disease in men. So there definitely are studies out there that are correlating this cow dairy with these type of diseases. There are also contaminants inside of milk. No matter how careful the manufacturing process is, there's always contaminants. Cow dairy consumption contributes to 50% for, for at least 50% of the human consumption consumption of what's called dioxins. A dioxin is a, is a term made for any type of toxic substance that is a um, that comes from a manufacturing process. They just call them th those toxins they call dioxins. So my camera shut up at this point but the point with the dioxins is that getting too much of these dioxins once they're in your system they don't leave your system right away and what happens is they start to wreak havoc on your immune system and that's how you start to get inflammation that's how people be can become more uh, become sick faster and more often and get diseases it's because those dioxins are not readily easily to be removed from your system there is also um, there's also some other contaminants that's called melanine that seeps into the milk system and that is based from the plastics that are used in the manufacturing process and the and this melanine if it gets into our blood system wreaks havoc on our kidneys and our uh, urinary tract functions. I don't want to freak you like I said I didn't want to freak you guys out but I did want to mention these you know, for these reasons and also for how I am feeling after I have had cow dairy, I am definitely not missing it at all. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I've removed it from my, di from my diet. There may come a time where we may try to re-add into my diet uh, small amounts of cow dairy to see how my body reacts to it. Uh, as a, on a small dose scale, but as far as right now, as far as getting the toxins and getting all kind of cleansing my body of all that stuff and and getting in and getting healthy and getting in shape right now that's that's not on the plan and I'm fine with it there are a lot of replacements that I'm using so for example I have almond milk instead of regular milk I love almond milk I have it plain or I have it unsweetened vanilla if you if you ever have that I don't even really have cereal anymore because I don't 
you, you get to pick and choose. You have to be pick and choosy when you see what you have available to eat, whether you want to waste a grain on a breakfast food when you're supposed to be having protein for breakfast. So I'm kind of picky at those kind of things. But if I do want something for dairy, I have almond milk for breakfast or I have almond milk for cow milk. For yogurt, I have coconut yogurt, which I absolutely love. And I have a couple different brands. One is So Delish that has a vanilla coconut, uh, that has a vanilla coconut yogurt. And then there's also plain and there's also other flavors. But I usually try to like to get the vanilla or the unsweetened kind to be able to use with my cooking. They have they have non-dairy cream cheese. There's always all these other options. They have, I'm hooked on the Daya. You'll see if you, if you watch my cauliflower uh, crust pizza recipe, you'll see I use the um, Daya uh, vegan cheese that is a vegan substitute and it's definitely curbs your craving if you have any type of craving for having cheeses and stuff. My husband is now having a little bit of dairy back in his diet, uh, like more things like cottage cheese, but he only uh, he's only limited to one a day. So again, it's like try to at least just like eliminate the amount of dairy you have in your diet but the first thing that i would do is just eliminate it for two weeks and see how you feel see if you feel better if you're having these other kind of symptoms or if anything just try to cut back because you really really will feel better if you don't just pump your system with all the stuff that is bad that is in the cow dairy so that is it for my video today, guys. I hope I didn't freak you out too much. I really just wanted to kind of answer those questions, give you guys the information that I know. Please, please do your research. You can Google, you know, why is cow dairy bad? Google all that stuff and do your own research. Ask your own doctor. Um, that is it for me today, guys. If you like these kind of videos, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Joanne. Nice to meet you. Uh, I do a lot of these kind of healthy informational videos now, especially now that I'm eating my new food plan. And no, it's not an official diet. It's, I just, I'm just calling it my new regime. And yes, I'm calling it regime and not regimen. So, somebody was mentioning in the comments, isn't it, isn't regime like the Nazi regime? No, it's also for me, it's a plan that was given from above. So it was given from my clinical nutritionist and I'm trying to follow it to the T and I'm I'm calling it regime so that's me so if you want to follow my regime you can make sure you hit the subscribe button you'll get notified as to when I upload all new videos you can also follow me on all of my other social media I am at Joanne plans on snapchat Instagram Periscope Twitter and you now only but I'm not on you now that much anymore because now I have the ability to be on YouTube live so with my, from mobile so I probably will be doing a lot more live feeds so so you make sure you get notified as to when I go when I go live so that's it for me today guys you guys be awesome enjoy the rest of your day and I'm going to chat with you in my next video bye guys